Hey, you clicked on my video. Appreciate it. Now be sure to like the video and subscribe to the page. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Outta My League. I'm Nick Diaz. Friday news dump. So we'll continue to do this going forward and we'll see how y'all like it. We'll just get a, uh, a bunch of news stuff out of the way rapid fire. So before we get into news that actually matters, Notre Dame fans are angry texting again. Brian Kelly was asked by the Associated Press about why he left Notre Dame uh, for LSU and the specific reasons why that was. And Brian Kelly told the truth. The facilities were behind. There was no cafeteria and nutrition uh, that was up to par with what he wanted at Notre Dame. And essentially they had little baggies of pre-made food that they passed out to the players after practice. And the recruiting was too restrictive to get to the players he wanted. And Notre Dame promised him they would fix all of these things in 2016. And by 2021, zero progress had been made. So, Brian Kelly said in the article, he left for LSU because, quote, I felt like I did everything I could at Notre Dame, and they felt like they did everything they could for me. I want to be in an environment where I have the resources to win a national championship, end quote. Now, as a result, Notre Dame media has since said, Brian Kelly has gone too far. He failed to win a national title at Notre Dame, not because of Notre Dame, but because of himself. It's his problem. I'm really over these delusional Notre Dame people, not just the fans, but the media members, because all Brian Kelly did was tell the truth. You've had like five or six different coaches since your last national titles in 1988, almost 40 years. And yet you're blaming him for the problem. The most successful coach you've had since 1988. Not yourself. He was asked a question why, and he gave an honest answer. He gave a truthful answer. Nothing that he said was factually incorrect. Why is it so hard for these people to understand, okay? It's easier to win a national title at a place like LSU. You have to be smart to get into Notre Dame. But for some reason, those smart people can't seem to understand Notre Dame has restrictive academic requirements. When you do that, it cuts the amount of talent you can get. Why is that so hard for you to understand? You have a bunch of fucking nerds on your team. Recruiting is all about relationships and geography. Indiana is not good at high school football. You have to fly all over the country to get good players. Therefore, it's harder to build relationships with those players, with those recruits. Do you understand? It's not that hard. It's basic math. LSU has none of these problems. Louisiana has none of these problems. In 2016, LSU was willing to start building better football facilities around that same time. Notre Dame was not. You refuse to be lenient on academics for your athletes. You refuse to join a conference. And you refuse to upgrade facilities. And he left you because of that. And yet, for some reason, you are blaming him for it. Bro, she left you for a hotter guy with a six-pack abs. You can either whine and complain about it, or start working out more at the gym. Okay, so an update from yesterday. Uh... We talked about, you know, tight ends and cornerbacks and offensive linemen that were in the transfer portal that LSU should and probably will be looking at. Well, we had an update. Uh, an Alabama reserve tight end, Caden Clark, is now in the NCAA transfer portal. He was a four-star tight end in 2020 and didn't see the field in 2021 because there's a loaded deck at tight end position at Bama, and he's looking for playing time. I have no idea if LSU is going to be interested in him or if he fits what they want to do, but I will tell you that Brian Polian, LSU's new special teams coach and recruiting coordinator who's in charge of keeping track of the transfer portal, he spoke with the media yesterday after practice, and he all but confirmed that LSU will, in fact, be looking in the transfer portal for a tight end, a cornerback, and an offensive lineman, just like I had previously talked about yesterday. Now, Polian did say that they have to be very careful about who they choose because of eligibility reasons, because they could find out that, hey, this guy's you know could be a one-year filler for a roster spot uh, just for, to have a body at camp. Or could this guy be on scholarship and he actually not be that good for the next two or three years? They have to evaluate everyone that enters in the portal every single day. And he says, yes, they see everyone that comes into the portal every single day and they evaluate them. So they are very much aware. 
I have no idea if they're interested in this guy. Maybe he doesn't fit what they want, but that's definitely a high-end, tight-end prospect that could easily come into LSU. So as far as the practice itself yesterday for LSU football, Brian Kelly did say last week that him and the coaching staff were going to start splitting up reps based on performance in practice. Now, there, there's no new news to report about quarterbacks. Uh, they seem to all be taking the same number of reps, but it is fair to note that the media only viewed the first 15 minutes of practice, so it was kind of hard to tell. But we did see video of the starting offensive line and their rotation being kind of shaken up because they were doing one-on-one drills with the defensive line and offensive line. And here was the starters from what we could tell. Right tackle, Cam Wire. Right guard, Miles Frazier, the transfer. Center was still Charles Turner, the veteran. Left guard, Xavier Hill. He's been there the entire time. And left tackle, Will Campbell. Y'all, the, I, I have watched a lot of video of Will Campbell at practice doing one-on-ones with veteran defensive linemen. And the more and more video I watch of Will Campbell... Honey, that child is the second coming. Whoever did not rate that kid a five-star needs to be fired from whatever media outlet they're for. I am getting more and more comfortable with the fact of him starting at left tackle as a true freshman. And that's unusual. That's unusual. And it's usually taboo to do that for a true freshman starting at offensive line in college, especially in the SEC. But... I will tell you, it's been done before in the SEC, and it's been done before with success. Maybe Will Campbell can have that success. Maybe he can't, but he doesn't look lost. He looks like the second coming. Now, Cam Wire, as far as him at right tackle, just seeing him in one-on-one drills and seeing his performance the last few years, um, I'm still not feeling it with him. I watched his, his video this entire week and last week, He's still just kind of blah. I would feel a lot better about that other tackle spot if LSU gets Tyler Steen from the portal, who's uh, from Vanderbilt. Center with Charles Turner. Look, he gets pushed back by everyone. I mean, he gets dominated at practice by everyone from what I've seen and what everyone else has seen, okay? That's just not going to cut it, okay? He's basically a placeholder until, you know, Garrett Dellinger comes back uh, from injury in the fall, who's taking snaps that are cross-training a lot of other guys. It's a placeholder for now. I I hope to God someone else comes up, especially Dellinger, who I think fits that position better. Left guard Xavier Hill continues to look good. Uh, Looks like he's vying for that starting spot. Tremont Shorts, who is the backup guard right now, according to rotations, uh, he's got good technique from what I saw on the video. You know, he was able to hold his own, but his get-off is like really, really, really slow. And his hips are really stiff. Um, He ain't going to be a starter. He's a veteran guy. He's smart. He has good technique, but... That lower body athleticism and flexibility just ain't there for an SEC offensive lineman. Now, as far as new guys on the defensive line that stood out, Makai Wingo, the defensive tackle transfer from Missouri who was all SEC freshman last year, that dude, from what I've seen, has maybe the quickest get-off off the ball of anyone that I saw in those videos. He's not very big. He's only six feet tall or so, but no one was quicker than him getting off the ball, or and no one was getting a lower pad level than Makai Wingo from Missouri. Uh, that's just what I saw from all the videos of the one-on-one drills between offensive line and defensive line. That's really the only significant thing you can tell right about now. Now, the other team in Louisiana that people are still trying to speculate what's going to happen with their roster is the New Orleans Saints. There are many people that believe the Saints are not done with trading uh, and moving around in the first round. Could they potentially use their draft picks this year to move up, specifically to get a quarterback? Now, I personally don't think the Saints should move up for a quarterback, uh, and I also think that they probably won't. I don't think the Saints should draft one in the later rounds either because you have plenty of serviceable quarterbacks behind Jameis. You have arguably the best backup quarterback in the league in Andy Dalton. But it is now being reported that the Saints plan to interview Ole Miss quarterback Matt Corral, 
who, for what it's worth, and not that I'm a expert scouting uh, guy, but he's my number one quarterback in this draft. Just my opinion. And other people who I trust feel the same way. But he's not necessarily being valued right now by that in the draft. It's something to keep an eye on for Matt Corral, who could very much fall to the Saints at 16 or 19 or lower, according to some mock drafts. Now, if you want to, you know, if you want to take him, you can. But personally, I see that as a loss of value for the Saints at the first round or even the second round with their 49th pick, because the depth at wide receiver and offensive tackle in this draft is huge, and that depth fits the holes on the Saints roster at wide receiver and offensive tackle and even safety. Use your first three picks or maybe more on those positions because most of the Saints picks have been very good even in later rounds. I don't know if I would waste it on a quarterback. Uh, Now, the last thing we'll talk about today, the high school NIL deals. Louisiana student-athletes are now cleared to get NIL deals, name, image, and likeness deals, while they are still playing sports in high school. Louisiana is now one of eight states in the Union, Alaska, California, Utah, Kansas, Nebraska, New York, and New Jersey, that have removed amateurism from high school sports. I'm not here to you know go through all the what's morally right, what's morally wrong, because I one, I'm not into getting into a morality argument with a lot of sports topics. That's not my job. And I don't have a clear answer to all of the positives and negatives. Maybe I'll get to that later. But what I will tell you is, who do these NIL deals in high schools benefit? Well, my first reaction when I saw this news was, the private schools in Louisiana that have big alumni bases are going to benefit a lot. The Catholic Highs in Baton Rouge, the U Highs on LSU's campus, Episcopals in Baton Rouge, the Newmans, the Jesuits, the Brother Martins in New Orleans, the St. Thomas Moores in Lafayette, Evangel Christian in Shreveport, John Curtis, not that they need any more help, uh, outside of New Orleans and River Ridge. They're only going to get stronger in all sports now because all those rich private schools that have big Old alumni bases that have been around for decades, and hell, some of them like Catholic High and UHI have been around for over a hundred years, they're going to benefit. They have deeper pockets. They have longer uh, lineage, so to speak. And that sucks for public schools in those areas. I'm not going to lie. But my other reaction is, how does this benefit LSU and other colleges in Louisiana? Because this kind of stuff already has been happening around the country and that is kids from other states they move to another state to play high school sports because they were recruited to play sports basketball football baseball at that school you hear about that with img academies in texas and florida kids you know will leave places all across the country to go play there for high school for three or four years That's already been happening. Cross state lines to play in better, richer high school programs to develop you to get a college scholarship. Well, what if you're a kid in Florida who does not have this law in effect for high school sports or any other place, but let's say Florida. He wants to make an NIL deal, and he's getting some looks at some colleges coming out of eighth grade. Let's say he wants to get an NIL deal for four years playing high school football somewhere, and that somewhere is, hmm, I don't know, a big private school in Louisiana that has deep pockets. You know how recruits, it's all about relationships. Recruiting is all about relationships. Well, it's better to build relationships with those high school recruits that are in your geographical footprint. You can drive five minutes to a high school in Baton Rouge if you're LSU. You can drive an hour to New Orleans or Lafayette if you're a recruit looking to come to LSU. You can get more kids near your campus to come visit. And so if you get more of these high-end prospects from other states looking to make an extra cash uh, while they're in high school, well, they'll come to Louisiana. And as a result, LSU is closer by, ready to poach them, ready to build a relationship throughout their high school years. And don't think the university lab school known as U High on LSU's campus isn't going to be involved in this for LSU's benefit. So Brian Kelly can just walk up and say, hey, you high alumni base. 
Go tell that sophomore defensive tackle in Florida or that five-star quarterback in Texas, tell him to come play over at U High for the next two years, and we'll give him a little NIL deal. And that way, it'll make it a little bit easier for us to recruit him. Do us a favor. So, it will hurt public schools. You know, not all of them. I think the older, bigger public schools that have a big, rich alumni base, they won't hurt as much. But potentially, it could also help LSU and every other Louisiana college for recruiting in their backyard. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter and Facebook in the description link below.